worship the Lord, and I don't know how you came in this morning. I don't know if you had joy or if you're upset about something. It's a rainy day, but we're going to choose joy this morning, right? I said this on Friday night, but the joy is not an emotion. You know, you don't just like feel it. Happiness is an emotion. It comes and goes. Joy is a choice. Who's going to choose joy this morning? Anybody? All right, I'm going to choose joy. We're going to worship the Lord with everything we've got, heart, soul, mind, and strength. Come on, clap your hands like this. Oh, yeah. We choose Jesus. Woo! Come on, sing. We worship. We worship the God who was.
Come on, you see it too this morning. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. Yes. And there's nothing to fear now, for I Shadows, you win every battle. 
our God. We give you worship, Lord, because there is nothing that can come against you. You are all powerful. Almighty God. I love, I love that song. And I love that one line that kind of passes by there really quick. It says, I'll sing through the night. I'm not, if you know your Bible, you know what they're talking about there. They're referencing Paul and Silas in the prison. And it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas began to sing. They begin to lift up a hymn of praise, a song of praise, right in their difficulty. At the worst moment of their life, they begin to sing praise. And we also know that song references Jehoshaphat. Come on, 2 Chronicles 2, two or 20, 2 Chronicles 20, when there was the battle, right? The enemy was coming against Jehoshaphat, the, the king of Judah, and all of Israel, all of Judah. And Judah... Or, and, and Jehoshaphat sent out the singers first. How crazy is that, right? So you got a bunch of singers up to the front of the battle. What's up with that? I don't know, man. But it's because it's a spiritual principle. Because our role in the battle is not to fight the devil. Our role in the battle is to lift up the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20 that at the moment, somebody say at the moment, at the moment they began to sing and give praise, the Bible says tehillah, they give praise, the Hebrew word for praise. At the moment they began to do it, it says God caused the enemy to begin fighting against themselves. <laughs> so this morning, if you're in a battle, just be reminded that you don't have to fight the battle. Now, nor do you sit back home on the couch. Your job is not to fight the devil, but neither, neither is it to sit at home on the couch. You have a role. I have a role in the battle, and that is to worship the Lord our God. And at the moment, by faith, that you begin to worship, God is going to cause an enemy to be thwarted, to be taken down in your life in Jesus' name. And we declare that. Amen? Amen. Listen, I want to teach you a brand new song this morning. Is that okay? If you don't know me, my name is Jeff Dio, and I am your guest worship leader. All right? So I'm so blessed to be here with you guys this morning. Thank you very much. It's awesome to be here again. I think this is like the sixth time or something like that. So thankful for Pastor Donnie and Linda inviting me to come and all the way from Minneapolis. But one of the joys of my life is I get to work with college students, right? I teach at North Central University in Minneapolis, and we write songs together, and we have this incredible chapel experience, worship encounter every day in chapel at school. But I had this opportunity to write songs. We wrote a new song called The Sound of Everything. I shared a little bit with you guys on Friday night, but if you weren't there, I want to teach you this song. Now, this song is about a spiritual sound. It's the sound, can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, we talk about revival. Can you imagine if real revival hit America? And the sound, the spiritual sound of every living person in this country, let's just say even around the globe, to turn from godless living to godly living, to turn from our sin, turn to God, the sound of everything returning to our God. And that's what we're speaking today. That's what we're believing for. And it's going to start with us, right? Like, I, it's going to start with me. I can't be too worried about all those people out there. I am going to come before the Lord my God and worship Him this morning. Amen? Amen? All right, I want to teach you the chorus. It goes like this. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. This is the sound of everything returning. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. This is the sound of everything returning. Come on, sing that with me again. Let it Let it overflow. 
us sing that first verse. We hear you calling. We hear you calling. You are restoring priorities. When our eyes are open, our eyes are open. like the cry, just like the cry of rushing waters, we bring our sacrifice of praise, sing that chorus, let it overflow. Thank you. 
the sound. This is the sound. This is the sound of everything returning. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. This is the sound of everything returning. Let it overflow. Revelation 19.6 paints the picture of all of creation, all of heaven, all of earth, all everyone who's ever lived, who ever will live, coming together to sing one song of praise to our God. Can you imagine the massive sound of every being that's ever lived coming to give praise and worship to our God? Now we've got the sound of the actual song in heaven that says this is the sound of many mighty rushing waters. But as I mentioned, there's a spiritual sound. It's the sound of obedience. It's the sound of parents loving their kids. Come on, it's the sound of husbands loving their wives. Come on, it's the sound of walking with Jesus, walking in the Spirit. It's the sound of us living in the way that God made us to live. That is a sound of worship. And we're saying, let that sound overflow. This, the people of God, surrendered to God, is the sound of everything returning. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you so much that you are our king and you are our hope. And we know that you give us all that we need by your spirit. We give you all praise and we give you all honor. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Donnie. I did this in first service, and I really want to do it again in second service. Can I have you make a declaration as a believer and a proclamation as a believer? Say this to me. Lift your hand up and say, I believe. I believe. Now shout that out. You can shout me off the stage. Say, I believe, I believe. with all my heart, all my heart. That, no I that no matter what I face, no matter what comes at my family, what comes at my finances, what comes at my physical body, I believe that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I believe, shout it out, I believe, the gates of hell, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I am the church. I'm part of the body. The greater one, come on, shout that, the greater one lives in me. I can't lose. The devil's defeated and Jesus gave me and the church victory. Now, if you believe that, give God a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't believe you believe it. <laughs> I don't believe you believe it yet. I think you're doing Simon Says. I'm talking about a faith on the inside that even though the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians in the last days, right, there'll be a great falling away. I'm not in that falling away. I'm a part of the body of Christ. Right. I'm only growing and I'm only going forward. So people may fall off, but I'm not falling off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring people with me because, listen, in the last days, yeah, there's going to be a falling away, but in the last days, what else is going to happen? God is going to, he said it, pour out his spirit over all 
flesh. How many believe that? I said, how many believe that? Now listen, if you really believe that, you've got to give me, give the Lord from your inside a greater shout of faith than just, yeah, hallelujah, good God, glory to God. No, you got to, from a faith indicator, from a fa place of faith, you need to demonstrate faith through your mouth and watch the walls come crumbling down because you are one who possesses the victory because Jesus took those keys from the devil and he gave them over to his church. The tomb is empty, believer. So go ahead and give God a shout of praise one more time. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We love you, Lord. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. I believe that everything is changing. You just, we've just got, to just, just got to agree in faith together that things are changing because God is changing things. There is revival in New Jersey. Hello. There is revival in America. There is revival in the world. We've just got to agree with it and go with it and shout with it and dance with it and express a faith in God knowing he's doing it. Go ahead, one more shout of praise to God. Go ahead, one more shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. You're like, come on, bold guy. Get off that. Get off this. Listen to me. Listen to pastor. Listen to pastor. Everything the Bible says and Jesus said would happen in the last days is happening. But don't get lulled to sleep by, oh, it's so negative, all this stuff. Yeah, it is. But the gates of hell I don't care if we're standing right in front of hell itself. We're not influenced by those gates. As a matter of fact, the verbiage kind of describes us knocking down the gates. Because again, the greater one lives in you. Change our perspective, Lord. Help us to see you in all the power and all the glory and all the victory that you have and that you've possessed and that you've given freely to your church. Help us to identify ourselves with that victory. Encourage the people today, I pray, Father. Encourage them in their hearts. Encourage them in their minds. And if anybody's b battling in their body, Lord, would you heal them right now? Could you touch them right now? Say, I'm, say, I'm battling physically. Throw your hand up. I need a healing touch. Throw your hand up. If you're at home, you need a healing touch. Throw your hand up. Throw your hand up. But throw your hand up in faith, ready to receive. Father, in Jesus' name, all these hands that are raised up need a miracle in their body. And we know that you're the miracle worker. Lord, you said to ask and that we would receive, that our joy would be made full. You said to ask in your name. You said of two or more, if we too agree, as touching anything on this earth, it will be done for us of our Father in heaven. So we agree right now for miraculous healing in the bodies of the people right now, and in a miraculous change, they'll sense it today, and they'll walk in faith and walk in victory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, one more shout of praise. Go ahead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, before you sit, I'm going to do something crazy. This whole group section right here, come out, come out, come out of you. Come out and go all the way to that section. And this middle section, go all the way to this section. Give somebody a hug. Say hello. Meet someone you never met before. Go ahead. These sections right here. Come on, come out of your section. Come on out of your section. Someone you love them, come on, say hi, hey, hello. Let it overflow. 
Let it overflow. This is the sound of everything returning. Let it overflow, Lord. Let the love of God pour out. Let revival of relationship in you. I like this. Grab a seat, everyone. Director Matt, don't leave yet. Grab a seat, everybody. Grab a seat. Grab a seat. All right. Director Matt, just in one second. Have your guys stay just a second. Grab a seat, everybody. I like the fact that you actually like each other. That's good. It means, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a great song? The sound of everything? Listen, God is doing something. Be engaged in it. Be a part of it. All right, let's grab a seat. Got to do a couple quick things, and I want to introduce my friend to you. You've already met him leading worship, but I want to talk a little bit about Jeff. Okay, grab a seat now. All right. There you go. Give the worship team a hand for working with Jeff. That was great. Great. So a couple quick things. I want to congratulate the Arrow Academy, eighth grade. I am so sorry I wasn't there. We had this here and that there at the same time. I haven't figured out how to split myself in half yet, but next year you can't schedule them at the same time. You can't, can't do that. So anyway, graduates, we love you, appreciate you so much. But there is something nice. On the 26th, say the 26th. Anyone who's graduated college, high school, uh, grammar school, we're going to pray for you, do something special right here on uh, June 26th, right? So make sure you're here, bring your family. If you know someone you're watching by, uh, by internet and you're, you're part of our church, bring someone out that we want to pray over for and congratulate them. I congratulate the Arrow Academy graduates. We have some of them here, I think. God bless you guys. Love you all. Maya, are you here? Nothing like embarrassing you, right? Your pastor embarrasses you, right? Anyway, you can embarrass me in my 50s wearing like cool sneakers. Like, what's up with that? But anyway, love you guys very much. Um, love the Nader family. They, you guys have been with us almost since the beginning with the school. So remember that meeting we had in there? <laughs> remember? <laughs> Boy, you, you guys really get, you were really quizzing me, but we ended up okay. We did, a, we did a great job. So thank you, Nader family, for being a part of that. Yeah, you can go ahead and bless them. So a couple quick things. You know I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, I guess it's maybe six months ago now. Uh, at the 10 o'clock service, second Sunday, we have a Spanish-speaking service going on at the same time in the JVA hall. Isn't that great? Every, every once a month, Indian service happening once a month. And we've got like 50 people coming out to that. Three Hindus got saved recently. It's just, it's just crazy stuff. That being said, we also every Sunday have a specific service. And Director Matt and, and Joel, we thank you guys for pouring into the young people, the high school age kids in our church. So give them a hand. And young people, Purpose Youth, you're dismissed to go with Director Matt. All right. Thank God. Did I do everything I'm supposed to do? Of course. No, I didn't. I'm supposed to take the offering. So, <laughs> so let's take our church offering right now. Uh, for those of you that are accustomed to giving a physical offering, right in front of your chair, you'll see an envelope. You can make out a check to Abundant Life Whippany. Put it in the envelope, and you can hand it to guest services. You see people from guest services are standing right up here in the front. You can give them your envelope after I pray. For the rest of you that are accustomed to giving uh, through the internet, AbundantLifeWhippany.com, 
right? You could text 84321. You can use a QR code. Hello. There's so many ways to give in this church. That's why we are, we are blessed, aren't we? So let me say what I said to the, to the first service as well. Sometimes when culturally we go through economic struggle, we are, anybody human here? They're, the ones that haven't raised your hand, I'm trying to figure out what you actually are if you're not human. But if there's anyone that's human here, you feel what's going on in the nation, don't you? Don't you love the gas prices? They're just beautiful, aren't they? Don't you love the grocery prices? It's just, it's wonderful. I took Linda out for a sandwich, a sandwich. I took her for a sandwich to a deli. And you know, you go to a deli, two of us, we sit down. We actually didn't, you know, we didn't have table service, so we were just buying it from the counter. What's a sandwich cost you? $43. Hallelujah. Can I say something to you? I blame all of you. I blame, I'm not to blame. You know why? I vote. I vote. And I put a picture of my bald head with my little, I vote. If you're a believer, how did I get on this? I'm in deep water now. I'm a believer. I vote. Make your voice be heard. If you don't vote, don't complain. Keep paying, keep paying high gas prices. But if you want your voice to be heard, vote. Like what? Really? Hello? Is there any Christians in the Christian building today? Let's go get ourselves together and make sure you're voting. Vote your values. What values? What I feel about things? No. This little book has a lot to say about values. If it doesn't line up, if your candidate doesn't line up with this, vote something else. Vote your biblical values if you want change. All right, enough said of that. But the re- one of the reasons I'm saying that is sometimes we're tempted and fearful about our giving and our tithing because gas prices, I can't afford to tithe. Can I tell you something? After 44 years of knowing God, I really need to tell you that. Can I be honest with you? I've been consistent all those years since I'm 16. And there's been times where I've been through, like, oh my God, how is this going to happen? And then I get the Holy Ghost, real stories, Holy Ghost check, I need $1,000. Holy Ghost check shows up in my mailbox, the $1,000. Kids' college tuition. The list goes on and on and on. So the thing is, if you're looking at what you are having in your bank and what's coming at you, and it causes you to push the pause button on your giving to God. You need to be careful, and I'm sharing this with you, not because the church has a need. We're doing very good, thank God, and thank you for being obedient. We're doing very good, best we've done in years, which is quite, quite amazing, right? Through a pandemic, that's only God. But what I have to tell you is, I don't wanna see you sabotage your blessing. God, you know, every time I mention something like this, it gets really quiet. <laughs> but the thing is, don't be mad at me. Just say, man, he, even though we get silent and even though it's not popular and everyone, you know, fights this stuff, he loves us enough and it, to be honest about how to break through your lack. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over. And if I called up some of you, you can give me a testimony, couldn't you? How many can, I'm not going to do it, but how many give a testimony of, the, of what God did financially? Because you were, oh, look, at, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Wow. I look at Stephen Yusick, and just because he had a desire, I'm going to really embarrass you. He's probably given, I don't even know, millions to Ukraine himself. How could that be possible? With God, all things are possible. When you're a tither, when you're a giver, when you sow into the kingdom, it's his, it's not Donnie's laws, it's God's laws. If you give, if you give it to you, good measure, pressed down, checking together, running over, will men give unto your bosom. Malachi, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, the place where you're fed, so there'll be meat in the house, but that's part A. 
You didn't read part B. Part B is, yeah, the needs of the house are taken care of, but more greater, your needs. He opens up the windows of heaven. How many think that the heaven has some resources? He opens the windows of heaven, and he pours you out a blessing. You don't have room enough in your little tent to, to hold all the blessing that's coming your way. And I said at first service, I love this. I wish I could illustrate it. I wish I could get it in your mind like it's in my mind. It says, God says, talking about God, God said, I will. You think God, God, you think God keeps his word? I will rebuke. <laughs> I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. If I, I look at it this way, I really think God is amazing. And if he's rebuking something or someone for me, I think it stays rebuked. Didn't come to preach that to you. I just felt to share that with you. Don't let fear grip you because fear is the opposite of faith. And if you don't operate in faith in difficult times, you're not going to see an outpouring physically, in your health, in your body, in your marriage, whatever it is. Operate in faith. Obey the word. And you know what? Those two simple things, you're going to be okay. You really are. So with that being said, let me pray over the offering. And let's take the offering here. And those that give online, you can go ahead and do that. Father, thank you for your word. You've always, always honored your word in my life and in our lives. We appreciate that. Lord, I ask you to help us to look fear in the eye and say, I will not succumb to you. I will walk in obedience and faith to the word. And as people are giving their tithes and sowing alms, I pray that you would bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. Bring them through this crisis. And Lord, remind them at ballot time that the chubby, bald pastor said, get out and vote. Let them remember that they're responsible for their current state. Help us to take responsibility. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can go ahead and take the offering. Now I want to introduce my friend. Let's go on to some good business. So what you don't realize and let me throw another thing in here. I noticed the church grows exponentially at about 20 minutes after service time. Did you notice that today, Jeff? Yeah. And first service too, right? It's like the COVID haze. We don't have to do anything. We, come on, we'll just show up late. Listen, I just feel like, personally for me, to be on time is 10 minutes early. Am I saying that because I'm already here, I'm good. You miss out on what God can do in a time of worship that's so much more powerful than even just, just, but preaching the word. The Holy Spirit can change you, heal you, touch you. Get back in a good habit from pastor doing some house cleaning. Get back in a good habit. Get here 10 minutes before and join the people in prayer around the altar. He's changed. We sing about it, you know. You're changing our priorities. Well, make priority. Get home. I mean, home. <laughs> this is home. Get to church early. Get your worship on. And let's see God do the miraculous. I believe he will. First and second service, right? Otherwise, we'll just keep it. If we started the service later, they would just come later. Let's just get our priorities right. How many will say, yes, pastor? And the ones that don't raise your hand, I'm going to cast the spirit of rebellion out of you. And God will heal you. <laughs> We have our friend with us, Jeff Dio, and I said this first service, and he laughed at me, but Jeff, I mean this. Like, you're my friend, that's great, but let's talk about what God's done in your life. We have the privilege this weekend to have a legend in Christian music with us. If you're not familiar with his story, he was instrumental in starting a band called Sonic Flood, and I remember it as a worship leader when I was coming up, being, whoa, this is a different sound. Took some of the old hymns, added a more contemporary rock sound to them, and they toured sometimes 80,000 people in stadiums. This is before anything like that was happening. So before Hill songs, before all this stuff, like God used him and the group to literally change the trajectory of Christian music and worship forever. Isn't that wonderful? But that's... So we're privileged to have you with us, but what I be honest, what I like about you more, although that's great, is you know my passion for joy songs the last 20 years is training, equipping, developing, media, worship. 
That's my drive. Sometimes it's funny because back in the day, Pastor Joe would go visit a church and they would say to him, he would come back and laugh at me, like, really? He'd go to a church and say, oh yeah, that's Pastor Joe. He's from the Joy Songs Church. <laughs> really? Thanks a lot. So it's important to me about training. He has been for the last 12 years at North Central, right? Elizabeth, right? You're, you're Minneapolis, your old stomping ground. And I've been privileged to go there and preach at chapel and Michael lead worship at chapel, preach at his church, great stuff. But he's been on a journey for 12 years pouring into the next generation of media, worship, uh, talented people that have a passion for God. And the people that he's trained now after 12 years are all over the world leading worship. That's what I'm impressed about. Because a lot of one-hit wonders, a lot of, yeah, that was my back in the day. He is focused on the kingdom. And man, I love you for that. I really do. Thank you for pouring your heart out on weekend. I know I'm taking time, but take as much time as you want. Last I checked, I'm the pastor, so I could tell you that. You could take any, as much time as you want. He's got a great word to share with us today. But I needed to give honor to whom honor to let you know how much I love him. And the wonderful thing is, with all that, he's just a great Christian, and we are great friends, and I always will be your buddy. So let's give Jeff a warm welcome. Nutley Abundant, uh, Whippany Abundant Life. Thank you, Pastor Donnie. Thank you, Linda, for having me, for hosting me again. I said it in the first service. I guess I'm still doing okay because they keep inviting me back. So, um, <laughs> But how many of you guys have never, ever heard me or seen me before in your life? Come on, we got some new folks, right? All right, that's all right. Well, the first time, you'll never forget. Could be good, could be bad. I don't know, but hope, no, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, right? Man, this feels like, it really does feel like family to me to be here at Abundant Life um, you know, what Pastor Donnie is saying is not just like, hey, we just say this stuff, but we're like family, like, you know, friends. Actually, Pastor Donnie is on my board of my ministry, and we meet all the time, talk all the time about, uh, we have such a passion for the kingdom, such a passion for the church, the body of Christ. And so it's an honor to be here with you guys. Um, I'm really, really stoked about what I'm going to be preaching on this morning as part of a series that Pastor Donnie began uh, last week called Learning to Walk. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a minute. It's, I think, one of the key, man, it's a pivotal sermon, a pivotal message for you in your life. Right, And it's going to be so important that you grasp what we're going to be talking about this morning. But if you haven't met me, I always like to share just a little bit about myself. I want to show you a picture of my family. Uh, I've got four kids. I've got a beautiful wife, Martha, of 30 years. Come on, we just celebrated 30 years of marriage. Come on, man. It's crazy. I cannot believe it. I remember when I thought six years was a long time. We're like, wow, we've been married for six whole years, you know. But like 30 years, I don't know where it goes. But uh, these are my four kids. Uh, I've got Roman on the left there and then Evan next to me. Those two guys, uh, Evan just graduated from high school. Roman just finished his first year at North Central University uh, where I teach. As you can see, and I've said this before, but those two guys, you know, they're just trying to make sure that they get their hair grown while they can. You see what I'm saying? That, uh, that's all I'm going to say. You understand? You know, they're like, we got to make it happen while we can. You know, so then we got a, a little space there and we've got our 11-year-old, almost 12-year-old Channing and then we got our little girl, Clara, who is 10 and takes the world by storm. Right, so that's our family. And then my other family uh, is North Central University. Show a picture of that, me leading worship there in chapel. We have a vibrant chapel every day uh, when schools and sessions were on summer break right now. Praise the Lord, that's why I'm able to be here, right? But uh, man, if, you're, if you have a student or you, have, you are a student or you have a grandson or a, a daughter or whatever, uh, I would encourage you, Check out North Central, northcentral.edu. It's a Christian university, liberal arts university, so you can 
yeah, major in anything. Of course, we have ministry focus as well, and I teach in the College of Fine Arts, uh, where I work with our worship leaders, our singers, our musicians, and with our songwriters. Have the opportunity, as I mentioned, to write and produce music with the team. If you do listen to music, and I'll show you a slide of that, that song uh, that we just sang, I taught you this morning, called The Sound of Everything. If you do listen to music on Apple Music or Spotify or YouTube or wherever it is, you should look Look up, as you can see, nor it's actually NCU's the hashtag there at the bottom. NCU Worship Live, all right? And that is where we put all of our music out, have that opportunity to co-write most of those songs, sing on a couple of them as well. But uh, check out that music. We have another slide of the song called Invading uh, that I think I sang here last year when I was here. And then I want to show you a couple other resources that I have. Um, the Lord has just been stirring in me. I'm, I'm a teacher at heart, and so as I learn, I wanna pass on what I've been learning. You know, this is not just me coming to you saying, look, I know it all. Here, This is me learning. This is me unlearning some things. Anybody ever have to unlearn some things, right? I was, I've been a Christian since I was four, but I learned some things wrong. Right? Come on. I had to unlearn some things and realize that I didn't have it all together. I'm still getting it all together by the power of God, by the Spirit of God. Right? But I wrote a book called Awakening Pure Worship about three years ago, put this out, and this is my heart. I, I didn't grow up like this, guys. I grew up, I think I had a closer relationship with church activities than I did with the Father. Just, do, you know, clock in, clock out, do the church thing. And I realized when I started reading the Bible, hello, somebody, that that's not the idea. The purpose is to have fellowship with God. Some people think the purpose is ministry. Guess what? Pastor Donnie, I realized the other day, I'm like, ministry didn't even exist in the garden. The only reason we need ministry, and we do, is because of the fall. We're trying to get everybody back to the garden, back to walking and talking in fellowship with God. Come on, somebody, right? Come on. That's what we're here for, is to walk and talk with God and to take as many people with us as possible to restore. It's the sound of everything returning to God's original purpose and plan to live with his creation, to fellowship with us, right? So that book will encourage you. It'll help you grow closer in your walk. Is there anybody that wants to grow closer in their walk with God? I'm raising my hand. Come on, somebody. I'm still growing. I want to grow deeper. This book, I've got a bunch of them out there. Uh, it would be good for you to get one. Then I wrote a book. I released this one. Pastor Donnie, this is really long. It's like two books. <laughs> Took me about three years to write this. It's like a life work. I have such a passion for the culture in the kingdom. And, uh, and so this book is, it's meant to be a worship leadership handbook for worship leaders, singers, musicians. But I got to be honest, it's more, I mean, it is that, but it is also just a leadership book. Like if you, if you lead a small group or if you, or if you are, are uh, uh, someone who serves here at the church and you love what God is doing in the church and you want to be a part of of helping to instigate and to carry on the, the vision that God has given Pastor Donnie, this book is actually gonna help you partner with other leaders, help you understand how to take culture that isn't kingdom culture and transform it to kingdom culture. Like, for example, being on time. Oh, did I just say that? Did I just, <laughs> did I just say that? Like, for example, see, that's what, what's happening right there where Pastor Donnie said, you know what? I love you guys, but you are actually hurting yourself by being late because you're not receiving all that you can receive. Now, you know what? Some people, you had a situation, there's no condemnation, right? But I said, let's not make a habit. Let's build, he was actually saying, let's shift the kingdom culture. Where are we at? I love this type of thing. I'm like, I wanna go to different churches and say, hey, where are we at? Hey, let's just discern you know, we're not gonna get all upset about it. Say, where are we at as a culture? If our culture, if kingdom culture is here and our church culture is over here, guess what we wanna start doing? Let's start moving this way, right? Okay? And so that, that's what Pastor Donnie, that's a small little thing. He's like, hey, 
let's just reel that thing back in, right? We understand we all got the COVID fog, the haze, all that stuff. You know, things change, but let's not stay back there. This is the sound of everybody returning to being on time and wanting more. It's not about being on time though, right? It's about your heart to desire all that God has for you, right? We're not getting on your case because you're late. Where in the Bible does it say thou shalt not be late? It doesn't say that, but it shows passion level when we don't, we're not intentional. You know, other things we'd never be late for, right? But church, man, let's go. Let's be a part of what God is doing. Show your passion level. Join with Pastor Donnie and Linda and this pastoral staff and let's build something. Can I even say something about the offering? Do you know God doesn't need your money? Right, okay? Now don't hear me saying that because God does require, but giving is not for God. It's not, God's not up there going, I'm poor, could you please help, me, help a brother out? Right? And this is not, it's a spiritual principle about being generous. He wants you to develop the character that he already has. He's a giving God and he wants us to be givers. He doesn't want us to be tight fisted. He wants to help us to help people. This is how we build the kingdom. If everybody, if everybody tithed, oh my word, the budget. I'm serious. Everybody just gives a little bit. Just 10%. So we all come together. This is your church. I've heard Pastor Donnie say, he said it. He said, this is my church. This is God's church, and it's the body of Christ together. If you have an issue with, well, what are we doing in our church? What are we spending our money on? Man, this is your church. Like, get involved. Pour money in. Come to meetings. Come to gatherings. Be a part of this thing, and let's build something together. Amen? This is not a place you attend. This is a place that your family, let's build something together. God doesn't need your money. He's trying to teach you to be generous. Let go. Hold loosely. Give. Right? That's God's character. And he wants to develop that character in you. Okay. We got lots of amens. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Let's get into the word. All right? Uh, well, like I said, I'm, I'm jumping in on a series here called Learning to Walk, right? And, and Pastor Donnie preached on learning to walk in Jesus, right? That's the foundation. That's where it all starts. But sadly, some people stop right there. And I'm telling you, I was telling Pastor Donnie, I feel that it's two sides of the same coin of the gospel. Some people might be, get upset with me on this, but I'm telling you, the gospel is not just that Jesus came to die for your sins and to forgive you, to, to overcome death, hell, and the grave, period, and it's over. The first half is Jesus making a way. Making a way for what? Making a way for us to have fellowship with God, right? I was talking about that. But how? No, we gotta know the how, don't we? Some people just think that, that they're forgiven and that's the way, that's all there is to the gospel. Like, well, I'm gonna sin, forgiven, shoo, thank goodness for the blood of Jesus. They don't understand. Jesus forgives us of our past and of course our future as well. But then he sends us the Holy Spirit to empower us to live for God. So if you don't get anything out of this sermon today, which I believe you're gonna get a lot, I want you to understand, so many times, pastors, preachers, leaders, podcasters, all these people, you'll see a message here or there, wherever it is, they don't always say this, but I need you to say this every time you receive direction from a pastor or a leader, and they tell you, you need to do this, or you need to stop doing that, I need you to add in parentheses three words, by the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because so many people are trying to grit their teeth and they're trying to follow God in their own power. But that's not how we're meant to do it. That's the old way. The old way, that's Old Testament. The Israelites tried to follow the rules. The Pharisees tried to follow the rules in their own power and it led to death. The alternative is not sin and grace will cover all of that, no. See, that's what we think. No, the alternative is live 
by the Spirit. So we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna first read the verse that is the theme verse for this series, Colossians 2, 6 through 7. It says, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established, somebody say established. I love that word. Come on. We need to be established. Are you rooted? Are you established? Come on. Are you just kind of back and forth like a wave on a sea, you know? We need to be established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Now I'm gonna go to the specific verse for this week's message. Now guys, there's a lot of different directions we could go. In fact, I'm writing a book, my next book, I believe it's gonna be the next one, is called Modern Day Superhero. And it's actually taking this whole Holy Spirit thing and breaking it down because I didn't grow up like this. I told Pastor Donnie, I told the church in the first service, we, we joked, we, we, only had, we had the Father, we had the Son. Like Trinity minus one or something. I don't know what's going on there, but when I grew up in church, we didn't talk about the Holy Ghost. That was weird. And a lot of churches are, are, are kind of putting the Holy Ghost on the side, the Spirit of God on the side. But on this earth, we're not gonna make it if we don't have the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of different directions I could go. There's 20 chapters in a book that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna write about the power of the Holy Spirit. We got the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We got the, the power to be witnesses, Acts 1.8. You have all these different verses. But one element that is very rarely preached on this subject is how we are to live in holiness, got real quiet, by the Spirit. Three words, say it with me. By the Spirit. Say it again. By the Spirit. Okay, that's what we're going to talk about. The verse I'm going to read is Romans 8, 12 through 13. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Romans 6 says that sin has lost its power in your life. Think about that. Does sin have a little bit of power? No, the Bible says sin has lost its power. And the Bible says you have no, some of us live like we do have an obligation to sin, right? Right? Or, or we think that we are powerless against sin. But there's been a great power transformation, transition, right? Right? It used to be that sin was powerful and we were powerless. But the Bible tells us that sin has lost its power and we have gained the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Verse 13 says, For if you live by sin's dictates or sin's power, you will die. Come on, this is New Testament. But if through the power, now, if, if in my own strength, Right? No, no. It says, but if through the power of the Spirit you put to death. Does it say you should manage there? If through the power of the Spirit you manage the deeds of your sinful nature. No, it doesn't say that. What does it say? Put to death. Oh, it's heavy, Jeff. Come on, man. I don't know, man. Just like I said, it's not Donnie's words. It's not my words. It's the Bible. And we don't believe this stuff, but we need to believe it. If the Bible says we should do it, that means we can do it. But how can you do it? By the Spirit. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Do we have anybody in the house who's a child of God? Is there anybody? Raise their hand and say, I'm a child of the King. Then you, through the power of the Spirit, can and must and are expected to put to death the deeds of your sinful nature and you will live. I know, I know. Somebody say, by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Somebody say, by the Spirit. That's all you got to know about this message right now. I'm going to give you four quick things that seem to be impossible. The world would tell you, no, there's no way you can ever do that. And you're going to say, but you're right, except by the Spirit. Number one, get rid of sin. What? Are you preaching perfection, Jeff? No, I'm not. I'll clarify. There you go. Truth. That's what it says. I'm just going to read it to you. Colossians 3. 
verse 8, it says this, but now, somebody say now. now. But now is the time to get rid of anger, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Somebody, that's a word for you right there. You're like, well, the Bible doesn't say I can't cuss. What's a cuss word? It's just a word. You know, different words have different weight. Somebody says, well, I don't like those replacement cuss words. But you know what? If I said frickin' and then I said the other word, you guys would feel different about that. I, I get it. Like, oh, I don't want to do the replacement. No, I'm just saying, every word has weight. If I say you're good, that's different than I say you're great. Because words have weight. And culture defines those things. And we know what words are the words. Anyways, yeah, this isn't about that. But I'm telling you, the Bible is clear. Okay, the Bible is clear. It says, it doesn't say manage your anger. Come on. It says, get rid of, okay? Ephesians 4, 31 says it again. Paul says it again. Verse 31, he says, get rid of all bitterness. Come on, somebody. Come on, it's time to get better, not bitter. Come on, let's, let's let it go. Just somebody say, let it go. Let it go. I get it. Somebody hurt you. They did what was wrong. Me too. Someone did it to me. And guess what? I probably did to someone else. And you probably did too. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to forgive. The Bible says if we don't forgive, then we won't be forgiven. Let it go. It says get rid of all bitterness. Some bitterness? Sorry, I just get, I'm a words person. You know, these little words, they mean something. All bitterness. All bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as most types of evil behavior. Sorry, I'm just, it says all types of evil behavior. Lord, help us. We can't do this in our own power. What would you do to help us, Lord? Oh, he's going to give us his spirit by his spirit. Come on, people don't understand the gospel. The gospel is Forgiveness and freedom to walk in holiness, to walk in the Spirit, right? 1 John 3, verse 9 says, those, oh, I don't like this verse, Pastor Donnie. <sighs> those who have been born into God, anybody been born into God's family? Anybody born again? Come on. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Why? Because God's life his spirit, am I wrong? God's life is in them. So they can't. Somebody say can't. <laughs> like, like you try. I was trying to sin, but since I'm, since I'm like a, a man of God, a child of God, I, I can't. I tried, but I can't. Don't you ever say can't about anything else. I can't make it. I can't lose that weight. I can't stop this. I can't stop. No, the only thing you can't do, the Bible says, because, I mean, we know it's so cliche, but I'm going to say it anyways. We can do all things through Christ and his spirit who gives us strength, right? Jesus lives, uh, it, it, Jesus lived. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He sent the spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, to live in us to give us the strength. So you can do all things but there is one thing you can't do. It says it right there. Can't keep on sinning. Why? Because they are children of God. How do we do it? Three words. Three words. By the Spirit. Come on, by His strength in us. Now, there's balance here, right? You, Jeff, again, you preach a perfection. No. I won't put this verse on the screen, but just listen. 1 John 2, verse 1. It says this. 1 John verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says this. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. Listen to these next two words. But if, but if you do sin, or so, sorry, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Now, I was talking to my son, my oldest son, and we were talking about how our, our kids are growing. They're learning things, okay? 
they know a lot, a lot of times more than I do. I understand. But my son was saying, now, Dad, because I was kind of getting on to him about his grades a little bit. Nobody else ever did that to their kid, right? <laughs> I was getting on to him about his grades. He said, Dad, like, I can't get an A plus on everything. Well, I gotta be telling you, my, my other son, Evan, his 455 member class just graduated. 89 of them had a 4.0 or higher. Anyways, I'm just saying, not everybody has to do that, but here's the thing. He said, Dad, you can't be perfect. I said, you're right, but you better aim for that. Let me ask you a question. If you're gonna do some archery, now I'm not an archery guy, but I have shot a few bows and arrows. You all better move out of the way because I might hit something, all right? Careful, all right? But guess what? When you're doing archery, where are you gonna aim for? Are you gonna aim for the side? Are you gonna aim over there? You're gonna aim for the center. Come on, if you don't, if you aim for 80% in your grades, guess what you're gonna get? Probably 60%. <laughs> you're like 80%. No, probably you're gonna get 60 Right? We aim for the center by the Spirit. Right? I might aim by doing some archery. The Holy Spirit is going to help me get that thing right in the bullseye. You know? But if you believe that you can't hit the bullseye, guess what you won't do? You won't hit the bullseye. It's, it's not even about name it, claim it stuff. It's just about truth. I mean, like, I can't. I mean, you, anytime you say you can't, not just because you spoke it, like, yes, we understand there's power, there's life and death in the tongue, but it doesn't even make sense. Like, you're like, well, I'm, I can't run that race. Well, I mean, like, what are the chances you're gonna win that race if you say that? You just don't have the encouragement. You don't believe the truth. We need to believe the truth that we can do everything that God has called us to do. And we need to move from an if or from a when we sin mentality to an if we sin mentality. That's a big difference, right? It's kind of like 80-20. You're like, well, you know, most, a lot of us actually believe wrong theology that 80% of the time we're probably gonna sin. I try, but I can't help it. But the Bible says if you sin, not when you sin. Hey, that's not perfection. You're not gonna be perfect. But God is saying that it's, it should be the exception to the rule, not the rule. All right, number two. Love not the world. I was gonna put don't love the world, but I just liked it sound better. I don't know, old school. Love not the world. How are we gonna do that, guys? How, how, do, we, how do we stop loving this world? Three words, right? By the Spirit. Now, come on now. When we're talking about loving the world, we're not saying you can't go out for a coffee, have a nice lunch. You can't enjoy some of these things. God has given us an abundant life. He's created the things on this earth to be a blessing for us, right? Here's the thing. You can have some stuff, but don't let the stuff have you. Now, that can easily be like, oh, I just throw that out there. That's a cliche statement. But seriously, does the stuff have you? Seriously. Do you understand that this world is fading away. Bible says it's like an old piece of clothing. How many of you have ever thrown out a piece of clothing because it wore out? The earth is wearing out. It is going to be destroyed and all those who identify with it will have the same destiny. The world is not my home. This world is not my home. It's a temporary. The Bible tells us that we're strangers. We're aliens in this world. So we hold loosely to the things of this world. Amen? Amen? Right? The Bible tells us in Titus 2.12. When's the last time you read the book of Titus? Anybody? Anybody doing that? We're going we're to start a new Bible study right here. <laughs> in Titus. Titus 2.12. It says this. And we are instructed to turn. Somebody say turn. Amen. Turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. It doesn't say turn from pleasures. Okay? There are some pleasures that are okay. But it says sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. Those three things. How do you live with wisdom? By the Spirit. How do you live in righteousness? By the Spirit. How do you, I can't be devoted to God. There's way too much. Uh, don't say can't. You said it. By the Spirit, right? 
You, we have to adopt this mentality that everything the Bible says, what did I say? Every time a preacher comes to you, every time you listen to a podcast, every time you read a book, insert by the Spirit with any direction. You need to stop doing this. You need to start loving your enemies. How am I supposed to love my enemies? They're mean. <laughs> right? By the Spirit. I can't do it by myself. So Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live. It's, it's a crazy uh, thing about Christianity. God calls us to die now so that we can live for eternity. The opposite is also an alternative. You can live now and you can die for eternity. I know that's sobering. But I'm telling you, the best life on this earth is when I'm dead. I live in righteousness and devotion to God because his spirit is full of me. It's directing me and my spirit is guiding me, leading me. That's the best life. You want to talk about best life now? <laughs> the best life is the one that God has for me. Love not the world. John, 1 John 2, 15 says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. I mean, I don't even know how much further we can go on this thing, right? Like, it says, if I love the world, I don't have the love of the Father in me. God, help us by your Spirit. James 4, 4, you're going to love this one. You adulterers. <laughs> Don't you realize that friendship, partnership, right? Somebody, somebody, some of you guys are partnering with the world. You're trying to partner with Jesus and trying to partner. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm stuck. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you're trying to partner with the world and you're part trying to partner with Jesus. That work. It says friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. Gotta let go. Many people ignore these scriptures because they reason it is impossible for us to be perfect. So God must not be serious about these commands. But they forget that he has already made a way for us to fulfill his commands by his spirit. That leads us to number three, obey God's commands. How am I supposed to obey God's commands? You tell me. By the spirit. Come on, do you know what this says about this? First John 2, verse 5, it says this, but those who obey God's words truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. So if you obey his commandments, it proves that you're living in him. If you are not obeying his commandments, it proves that you are not living in him. Please hear me right. Obeying commandments does not make you saved. Like, we don't need to obey the commandments and then we can get saved. It's because we are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit that we can obey his commandments. That's a distinction. It's very important, right? We're not talking legalism. We've been saved by grace. Come on, we've been saved by the blood of Jesus. But we make a mockery of what Jesus has done when we receive his blood to forgive us, but not his spirit to empower us. Help us, Lord. 1 John 5, one, uh, verse 3 says, Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. I got another book I'm going to write. It's called Love Lines. Talk about the guidelines of God are actually love lines. They're not mean. God's not trying to be mean by putting all these commands out there. It's like the rules of the road, man. They're keeping you safe. The lines on the road, the rules in a sports game. How are you going to play the game if there's no boundaries? We can't even play the game. God's given us commands not to hurt us, but to help us. Number four, walk in holiness. How do you walk in holiness? 
by the Spirit. Man, that's impossible, Jeff. You're right. It is impossible if you try to do it by yourself. And that's what God saw. I mean, I think he, <laughs> he didn't need to, he understood this from the very beginning. But you look at the whole Old Testament, that is what we're facing. The, all the Israelites, they tried to do it on their own, right? In the Bible, the Holy Spirit would come on individual leaders and give them power for a specific assignment and then leave. So they just had the power, like Gideon or Samson. It's like, boom, Holy Spirit, do your thing. All right, done. Holy Spirit gone. But that's one of the biggest changes. I mean, think about this. In the Old Testament, we actually already had forgiveness. Now, we did not have the blood of Jesus. But God talks about, even in, in Isaiah, about how he wants to forgive us. The Old Testament was all about forgiveness too, but we didn't have the blood of Jesus and we didn't have the individual empowerment or baptism in the Holy Spirit for every believer who receives. That's what, I mean, it's like that's what was missing. <laughs> they tried hard to obey, they couldn't do it. They tried to walk in holiness, they couldn't do it. So Jesus said, or God said, I got a solution. I'm gonna forgive your past, I'm gonna empower your future. I'm gonna give you my spirit. Oh, man. So our job is to believe the truth of what God's word says about us and then begin to live in this truth by faith. I think we have that one on the screen. Believe the truth of what God's word says about me and then begin to live in this truth by faith through the Spirit's power. I wanna give you four quick scriptures They'll help you understand this power that much better. Okay, number one, God has given us a new spirit with access to a new heart and mind. Pastor Donnie, this passage in Ezekiel 36 changed my life. Because, I mean, I had this idea that, you know, my heart is in pieces and God's coming in with duct tape to wrap it up and, like, try to fix it up, like healing, you know, little duct tape, something like that. But that's not what it says, that God is going to give you his heart. The Bible tells you to put on the mind of Christ. Right? He's not trying to fix your mind. You need to give him your mind and take on his mind. Right? E Ezekiel 36, verse 26. And it says this, and I will give you a new heart. This is a prophecy about today. It, it was spoken by Ezekiel about what God was going to do, and he did it through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Spirit. He says, I will give you a new heart. Somebody say, new heart. New heart. Ooh, I got a new heart. If you believe you have an old heart, you're gonna stay in sin. You're gonna keep walking in, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say you have an old heart or a duct-taped heart. You have a new heart. And he says, I will put a new, give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you, I will take out, somebody say take out. Yeah. Take it out, Lord. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And it says, verse 27, which is not on the screen, and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. How is he gonna help us obey? By his spirit. He's gonna give you a new mind, a new heart, and a new spirit, and that's how you're gonna be able to do it. Number two, God has put, with this is God's help, God's way of helping us. He gives us a new heart, new mind. Now he's given us a new nature. God has put within us a new nature. Ephesians 4, 17 through 24, I'm gonna read verse 23. It says, instead, somebody say instead, See, that, that, that speaks of changing culture right there, that word. It's like, you used to think this, now think this. Instead, let the Spirit. Somebody say, let the Spirit. Whew. I think we have this verse. Maybe not, but uh, Ephesians 4, 23. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Man, some of us, we are kind of stiff-arming the Spirit. And we need to... Let the Spirit 
renew our hearts and thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Did anybody read that verse? What in the world? Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts, that's your mind, right? And your attitude, put on your new nature. It's like clothes. Trying to wear both at the same time. Got one arm in one coat, one arm in another coat. You know what I'm saying? Put on your new nature. Put on your new nature. Created to be like God. Amen. Truly righteous and holy. How am I going to do that, Jeff? By the Spirit. Colossians 3 19, or 3 verse 10 says, Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Thank you, Jesus. Number three, God always provides a way out in temptation. Man, people forget about this one. It's so old school, right? But there's always a door A, which is follow the path of temptation, but there's always a door B. The Bible says he always provides a way out in temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. Is he faithful? Yeah. yeah. He is faithful, and he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. Think about that. People actually take this verse out of context. They, they, they think it means trials that you can't handle. That's not what this verse is saying. Temptation that you can't stand up to. It's actually saying there's no temptation that he will allow to come your way that you don't have the power by the Spirit to say no to. Wow, that's pretty intense. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Are we looking? Are we looking for the way out? Are we so focused on door A? There's always a door B. He provides a way out in temptation. Lastly, God has given us, and Sean, you can come. Just Sean, come up and play for us. God has given us a full access, full access to the power of his spirit. I literally put down Romans 8, 1 through 14, and I'm not gonna read it all, though I would love it if you would. You know that the church, you know that the church is not meant to feed you? I mean, this might sound kind of weird, but have you ever followed the analogy of the sheep and the shepherd? I'm not a farmer, Pastor Donnie. You're more of a farmer than I am. You got a dog and, <laughs> and some bunnies and a horse, right? I mean, but, but have you, I mean, think about the, the job of the shepherd. Does the shepherd feed the sheep? I mean, again, I'm not a farmer. I'm just thinking like, does he get down there and he feeds the sheep? Does he even pour hay into a, a manger, <laughs> a trough, right? No. With sheep, what do they do? They graze, right? And what does Psalm 23 say the job of the shepherd is? To guide us, to lead us to new pastures. Guess what, sheep? You're supposed to be feeding yourself. Self-feeders. Come to church, get inspired, hear some truth, and then go home and study it for yourself. Think about it. So many, so many churches, they eat the regurgitated word. From, I mean, I'm not, the pastor's not doing anything wrong. He goes, but we think we hire the pastor to go study the word, tell us what God's saying, and then we'll hear from the pastor. Whatever God says, we'll do it. No, every believer is supposed to be hearing from the Lord for themselves. Come on, somebody. How are you supposed to do that? How am I supposed to hear from the Lord? By the Spirit. Oh, man, that was right on cue, Sean. That was perfect. 
Come on, how am I supposed to hear from the Lord? Isn't that the pastor's job? No. First mm. Peter 2, 9 says we are a kingdom of priests. He's changed the paradigm. Every single one of us is supposed to hear from the Lord by the Spirit. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, this is that verse we started with, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Oh, man. Come on, guys. God has given us the answer, and the answer is not us doing or trying harder. And the answer is not to try harder. Work harder. Come to church more. I mean, you should come to church more and be on time. But that's not the answer. It's by the Spirit. Trust the Spirit. Lean into the Spirit. The last slide I'm going to put up there is this. Don't try to decrease your appetite for sin. Come on, a lot of people do that. They're, oh, i got to stop sinning. Jeff said stop sinning. Stop sinning. That's not the focus. The focus is pursue the Lord. Don't put your effort into stopping sinning but to increasing your appetite for God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we stand together? I want to take a few moments, all right? We have a few moments still. I want to take a few moments, and I want to invite you to a place of prayer. And I'm, I'm going to make these altars open. And look, if you come up here and you're on your knees, that doesn't mean that you're living a massive life of sin. Now, you might be, and you need to repent, okay? But because God heals us, right? He forgives us. He cleanses us, but he empowers us. What I'm talking about is I want to encourage you, challenge you to do two things. Number one, confess sin, right? Some people think, hey, I don't need to confess sin because uh, Jesus already died for all that sin. Now, this is just my understanding, but... I like to treat God in the same way that I would treat my family. So if I hurt my wife, how many of you would agree that I, it would be best for our relationship if I go to Martha and I say, baby, I am so sorry. I was wrong. She's like, oh, honey, I already forgave you. No worries, you know. No, it, it's, it's because I love my wife that I have to speak those words, I was wrong. It's hard to say sometimes, Pastor Donnie. <laughs> I was wrong. Come on, men. <laughs> Ladies, all right? I treat it that way with God. Like, I know he forgives me. I'm a child of the king. I'm a son. But that doesn't mean, and I'm not talking about when I sin, now I'm not a son. Then I forgive, now I'm the son. Now I'm not a son, now I'm not a son. Oh, back and forth. No, because I'm a son, I would want my son to still come to me. I would still go to my father, my true dad, Art Dio, my father, and I would say, Dad, I messed up. Please forgive me. But why is it any different with our heavenly father? We know he forgives us. But there's something, it's just like giving teaches you to be generous. Come on, confessing teaches you to be humble, right? So I want to encourage us to do two things, to confess our sin. Maybe it's small, maybe it's big, I don't know. But any sin, the Bible says all have sinned, right? All have sinned, and all have fallen short of the glory of God. So it's right for us to come. It's a right, it's actually, I would say it's an act of worship, even, to repent. So we come, we repent, and then number two, that we would renew our commitment to live in the Spirit. Come on, can we do that? Can we do that this morning? Cool. Even as Sean is playing right now, I'm just gonna pray, and I'm just gonna invite you, let's take just a few more minutes. Can we just invite anybody who come, leaders, 
those are first time guests. Say, I want to pray. I want to renew my commitment to live in the spirit. I want to confess that I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you will receive forgiveness and restoration in your life. Can we come church? Can we give our hearts again to God? Let's commit ourselves to his ways, to walking in holiness, to getting rid of sin. Come on, he is called us to be the children of God. And the way that we show that we are the children of God is by living in his spirit, obeying his commandments, turning away from the things of this world, and embracing our God. Thank you, Jesus. And I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Lord. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, oh. Here is where I lay it down. Every bird and every crown. This is my surrender. Come on, you can still come. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Oh, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, God, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Lord. So Lord, we confess today that we have sinned. I, I have sinned. And it's because I love you that I come to you with these things. And I confess, Lord, that I have done things or said things that were not from your word. I've believed things that are not true about me, about the way that you have designed us, Lord. And so I confess and I repent and I receive the forgiveness from the blood of Jesus. God, we're as bold as to say, as your word says, that, that we should eat your flesh and drink your blood. This is a metaphor of us ingesting all of who you are. You coming into our body for us to digest the truth of the forgiveness, the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus given for us. But Lord, we don't stop there. We know that you said it was best for you to leave the earth. You came, you gave yourself for us, you forgave us, and then you said, I must go so that I can send the Holy Spirit. In fact, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come. So thank you, Jesus, for giving us each access to your Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, by leaving and then sending the Holy Spirit to fill us and baptize us. And I would say even right now, if you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I would encourage you, just say, God, I want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us we should ask and we should receive. Just like salvation is a gift, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is a gift. Receive this morning the baptism, the empowerment of the Spirit. And let's renew our commitment. Abundant life. Come on, abundant life can only be lived by the Spirit. It's the name of our church, right? Abundant life. You can't have abundant life in your own power. But by the Spirit, you can live in an abundant life. So let's renew our commitment. We just lift up our hands all over this place. God, we renew our commitment to walking in your Spirit, to learning to walk 
like in your spirit. We say, Lord, would you teach us? Come on, somebody say that. Teach me, Lord. Teach me how to walk in your spirit. Teach me how to live in your spirit. Teach me how to obey in your spirit. Teach me how to walk in holiness by your spirit. Teach me how to hold loosely to the things of the world by your spirit. Come on, at Abundant Life Whippany, we renew our commitment to living in your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Can we just sing that song one more time? Here is where I lay it down. It goes like this. Here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. This is my, here is where I lay it down. Here is where I, every lie and every doubt, every lie and every, this is my surrender. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you. And I will make room for you to do whatever to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to Lord and I will make room for you my God to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want to sing it one more time come on and I will make room for you, my God, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, Lord. And I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want. Pastor Donnie, will you come? Oh, yeah, sorry. Pastor Vernon. the Spirit to be renewed. Amen. By the Spirit to set a new commitment to live with a new heart. To turn a direction and be part of that amazing wave that's turning to God. And that's leading the way for others to find the way. Amen? So, Father, we just thank you and bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your Spirit here today, Lord God. We thank you for the reset that you have effected in our lives, Lord God. We don't make light of this experience, Lord God, where you have shown up to show us the way and show us the new way, that we might abide in you and you abide in us. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for it, Lord God, and we take up this commitment afresh to live all our days. We know, Lord God, that the time is short. We take up what you've given us, Lord, to use it each and every day of our lives. Bless you. We thank you. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give it up. 
this is for the Lord. This is for the Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for sending us Jeff this weekend. Well, as you return to your seats, want to prepare to receive an offering for Jeff. I want to just remind you whether you were here on Friday or not and whether you were a part of what he was doing all day yesterday. Jeff was here with us on Friday, led an amazing time of, of worship. All day Saturday with the worship and media team imparting to them truths that would make a difference not just in their ministries but in their lives and then today to give us this word, this very, very timely word. And you know, each time we receive an offering for a guest speaker, you know, we have an opportunity to say to the Lord, thank you for sending that speaker. But I think there's more at work here. Obviously, he's been here the whole weekend, but if you were paying attention, you heard that Jeff is engaged in preparing the next generation. He's engaged in imparting and raising up a new generation of worship leaders and of people who are going to go and live out this gospel to change lives. And so as we prepare to receive an offering, what we're really saying is, is that we have an opportunity to join in with the changing of a generation. And so... It is a way for us to say thank you, and it is a way for us to agree with God and his hand in preparing the generation going forward. If you are here in the sanctuary and you want to give a physical offering, you can do that. There's envelopes in your seatbacks. The guest services attendants are here to receive that. Just raise your hand once you've finished writing a check. And, of course, you can type in text 84321 on your phones. Hit the drop down for guest speaker. You can do the same thing on our website. Father, we just thank you. We agree, Lord God, with what you're doing and with what you're doing through your choice servant, Jeff Dio. Thank you for the privilege of partnering with you, of giving and agreeing with what you're doing through his life and will continue to do it, Lord God. Thank you that you will take what we give, and you'd multiply it out and use it, Lord God, to further all the work that you would do through Jeff. We thank you and bless you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, want to just um, turn your attention to our video announcements in just a minute, but want to just ask if there's anyone here with us for the first time, any first-time visitors, just give us a little hand wave. Welcome. So good to have you here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I want to make sure that our guest services attendants get to you. We have a nice gift. We want to say thank you for joining in and visiting us this morning. Amen. And with that, please join me in viewing the video announcements. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Abundant Life Whippany. Hope you are enjoying the service. Here are some church announcements. Purpose Youth Group meets every Friday at 7 p.m., as well as every Sunday morning during our 10 a.m. church service. If you are in middle or high school, please join us. For details on all our activities and special events, please reach out to Matt and Joel Petruzzi or visit the church website and find Purpose Youth under Impact Groups. Calling all parents and kids, our annual Kids Fest outreach is finally here. If you have kids from 3 to 12, tell them to grab their friends and wear their sneakers because we are going to challenge their mind, body, and spirit this Thursday, June 16th from 6.15 to 8.30 p.m. Kids who bring five or more friends will be entered to win four tickets to DreamWorks. To register, scan the QR code or visit our table in the foyer. Kids Fest 2022, born to run. We will see you on June 16th. Calling all riders. The Three Nails Motorcycle Union Impact Group is kicking off its season with a bike blessing and ride on Saturday, June 18th here at the church. We'll gather for breakfast and the blessing of the bikes at 9 a.m., then take off for a scenic ride through Morris County. Please go to the events page on our website to register. 
Our monthly Indian outreach gathering will be held this coming Saturday at 5 p.m. in the sanctuary. Please take this opportunity to reach out to your unchurched Indian friends and anyone who would benefit from this ministry. For details, please text Indian Outreach to 973-847-2743 or contact Matthew Ratnam at Indian Outreach at ALWCW.com. Are you sensing the call for ministry? Join Pastor Donnie on Zoom along with others like you who are seeking clarity and want to learn how to plan and execute the call according to the Word of God. Go to events or the impact groups page on our website for more info and to join. On Saturday, June 25th, the Spanish ministry will be having its beginning of summer picnic at Black Brook Park in Whippany from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Join us along with any family and friends for a great time of fellowship, activities, and food. Please register in the lobby if you would like to attend or if you would like to help in any way leading up to the event. El sábado 25 de junio, el Ministerio Hispano tendrá su picnic de comienzo de verano en Black Brook Park en Whippany de 10 a 30 de la mañana a las 4 de la tarde. Unas y a nosotros junto con familiares y amigos para un buen tiempo de compañerismo, actividades y comida. Racista estrella en la nova si desea asistir o si desea ayudar de alguna manera antes del evento. If you are a 2022 high school or college graduate, or if you have a son or daughter who has graduated or will be graduating, please plan to attend the 10 a.m. service on Sunday, June 26th, so we can recognize your accomplishment and celebrate with you as a church family. One of the many ways Abundant Life reaches out to our community is through our food pantry. Please refer to this list of desperately needed items when you are at the grocery store each week. Many families in our surrounding communities rely on our pantry to meet their basic needs. If you would like the list sent to your phone, simply text the word PANTRY to 973-847-2743. And if you find yourself in need of basic necessities to provide for yourself or your family, please call the church office to arrange a visit to the food pantry. Non-perishable donations may be placed anytime in our bin under the canopy. Please see Sean or Lisa Marshall to arrange donations of perishable items. Lots of, lots of exciting stuff going on. Amen? I want to just uh, share one more exciting thing with you. Our campaign for the month of June, you know, is connecting families. Two things we're looking to have us do in the month of June. One, we want you to connect with someone that you haven't met before, get out in that foyer and get a picture with someone, two people over the course of the month that are new relationships for you here in the church. The second thing, and maybe even more important, is when you came in this morning, if you didn't receive one, you should have received the card that is an invitation to our tailgate party on the last Sunday of the month, the 26th, right after second service. We want to have a ton of new families come out and we want to get their pictures and all of those pictures up on our Connecting Families wall. So please, on your way back out, if you've met someone, go get a picture taken. Also, grab an invitation, grab a couple of invitations, take them to your neighbors, take them to your friends. Let's make sure that that parking lot is full of new families that we can say we've now connected with and we can have their pictures on the wall. Amen? And also, just want to uh, let you know, as far as the tailgate party is concerned, if you'd be interested in making uh, a side dish or a salad, there's a sign-up in the foyer. We're going to take care of the other parts of the meal, but we'd love to have side dishes. Please avail yourselves of the sign-up. And with that, if you'd please stand. Now it's a blessing. One final reminder for the BUILD families, of course, the BUILD Lake event has been canceled due to the weather. Be on the lookout. There's going to be emails and communications to the families about a new date. Amen? So we've heard that word, walk in the Spirit. 
There's nothing more practical that we can do than to do that. But we understand that it's not just about doing it here. It's not just about hearing a message. It's about living it out in such a way that others will see it. So as you go forth, walk in the Spirit. Amen? So good to have you here. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Love you all. Have a great rest of your weekend. You're dismissed.